Today, we're gonna to talk about taxation of your social security benefits. That's right, your social security may be taxable. How much? Well, it depends and it depends on your combined income. And today we're gonna to talk about how much of your social security may be taxable. We'll go through the, the calculation for that, but also stick around to the end where I'm gonna talk about some strategies to potentially reduce the tax on your social security benefits. I'm Scott with Siren's Financial Group, where we partner with clients to bring solutions to their key questions. Are you on track for retirement and financial independence? What can you do to help improve your financial picture? And then how can you help reduce your overall tax situation? I find that one of the most frustrating taxes for people is that tax on their social security benefits. And so today we're gonna to talk about what you need to know, meaning how much of your social security is taxable. Also, like I said, stick around to the end because we're gonna talk about strategies that you could potentially use to reduce those taxes. First, let's talk about how to determine if your social security is taxable. And that formula and the thresholds are all based on your combined income. And so what is combined income? Combined income is a formula of multiple parts. One is your adjusted gross income. What adjusted gross income is, is this is your gross income, like wages, dividends, capital gains, um, business income. Don't forget about those retirement distributions. So your IRA, 401k withdrawals, it's that gross income minus any adjustments. Adjustments could be like education, ex educator expenses, student loan interest, alimony payments, and um, any sort of retirement account contributions. That's the first part. Then you add to that any non-taxable interest. So for, in for, for example, right, any interest from municipal bonds or municipal funds, any any non-taxable interest you're going to add into that formula. And then last is you add in 50% of your social security benefits. So if you have, let's say $60,000 a year coming in in social security, you're going to add $30,000 into this formula. Now, when you add all of those together, that gives you your combined income and once you have that number, we can then use the, the thresholds to determine how much of your social security may be taxable. So now that you know your combined income, you can use that and then align it with the thresholds provided by the Social Security Administration to understand how much of your benefit then gets added into your taxable income. So how much of that benefit will go into the taxable income and get taxed? And it's different if you're a single versus, uh, let's say, married filing jointly. So let's walk through the, the thresholds here and, and help you understand. First off, if you're single and your combined income is $25,000 to $34,000, or if you're filing a joint return and your combined income is from $32,000 to $44,000, then up to 50% of your Social Security benefits are taxable. Next is that if you're making as a single over $34,000 or as a couple, again, filing jointly, making over that $44,000, then up to 85% of your social security, again, adds into your taxable income and is therefore taxable at whatever tax brackets and rates that, that you are at. Now, these are the rates as of 2021, but I always recommend going to the social security website to make sure you find the most up-to-date thresholds as well as uh, percent rates of how much of your social security could add into your taxable income. Okay, now that we know how to figure out combined income and how much of your social security is potentially taxable, let's talk about ways that maybe you could potentially reduce the tax on your social security benefits. Okay, let's talk about some strategies to potentially reduce the taxes on your social security benefits. And to do that, what I did is brought back up the formula for combined income. Because as you saw, combined income is what determines which threshold you'll be in and how much of your social security benefit becomes taxable. Now, first off, I'll tell you this, if you've saved a healthy amount in your retirement accounts, more than likely, you might not be able to avoid the tax on social security. And it just is what it is. And, and unfortunately, um, just part of the rules by the IRS and, and you're gonna get taxed on your social security benefits. 
it, it, and again, if you've saved a healthy amount, you might not be able to avoid them. Um, some other strategies though to consider, and as you can see from the formula here, and as we talked about the thresholds, it's just all about keeping your combined income as low as possible. Now to do that, you would want to then reduce any of the items that you see here in the formula. Well, let's start with the third line item. Are you gonna reduce your social security benefits? Probably happy, we'll all be happy, right? Getting as much as we can from social security. So we're not gonna reduce our social security benefits. Non-taxable interest, I'll come back to that in a second. So the main line item here, if you really want to reduce the tax on your social security benefits, then you're really gonna to have to focus on how do you reduce your adjusted gross income? And you might be thinking, well, Scott, I'm not going to have income in retirement. Well, actually you will, because you see adjusted gross income includes your IRA and 401k withdrawals. And so all of that money that you're going to take out of your IRAs, 401ks, and don't forget about the required minimum distributions, all of that goes into that adjusted gross income line item. So what are some ways, I guess, if, if we do want to try to reduce the combined income, reduce that tax on your social security benefits, what are some ways then to reduce your adjusted gross income? Well, one strategy, and this would take some really advanced planning, but one strategy that you could consider is putting money then instead of into those IRAs and 401ks is putting money into your Roth IRAs and Roth 401ks, you see, because as you put money into those accounts, you pay tax up front, but they grow tax free. And then you can make all of your withdrawals tax free. So when you withdraw from those Roth accounts, those don't add into your adjusted gross income. Now, that would take some planning thinking really on early on in life, right? So you might be saying, well, but I'm five years away from retirement, or I'm in retirement, or I you know, looking to retire next year, what are some strategies that you might be able to incorporate? Well, another thought process is, is to utilize Roth conversions to get the money out of your IRAs and 401ks, right? Getting it out of those accounts and then converting it into Roths where yes, you will have years where your adjusted gross income then is maybe um, a little bit higher, but then if you get the money out of those accounts, right? So we deplete those accounts and bring them down. Now you don't have those required minimum distributions. And, and again, you've adjusted your, you've reduced your adjusted gross income in your future. And so hope and, and maybe help reduce that tax on your social security benefit in the future. I want to pause there for a second. You have to remember transferring money out of the IRAs, 401ks, converting it over to the Roth, you will pay tax when you make that conversion. Is it the right thing to do? First off, you should really um, consult with a team, right? Your financial advisor as well, well as your tax consultant um, and do some tax planning because there's two things that you want to consider. One is what is your taxable income today? And then what is your taxable income in the future? That's number one, right? So looking at that forecast, where are you at today versus the future? And then the other is, well, where, where do you think your tax rates and tax brackets will be today? And where do you think they'll be in the future? You see, sometimes it doesn't make sense to do those conversions because your tax rates may be lower in the future. For people that have saved a, a significant or just healthy amounts in those IRAs, 401ks, you could be looking at the same or maybe higher taxes in the future. So it all depends on, on your situation. But that strategy is potentially utilizing a Roth conversion to help reduce future adjusted gross income. All right. And then the third one is, is that if you do have brokerage accounts, right? So accounts that are pushing off dividends and interest, all of that also adds into your adjusted gross income. And so another thing that you could do is as those taxable accounts are adding into it, you could um, put those into tax deferred vehicles, right? So then now you're deferring the tax on those dividends and interest till, till later. Um, and so again, just trying to help reduce that adjusted gross income. All right, hopefully those are some strategies. You can kind of look at your picture Again, I highly recommend um, consulting with a team, a financial advisor, as well as a, a tax professional to see if those strategies are a potential fit for you in your situation. 
I hope you found this video to be of value and benefit. And if so, and you'd like to see additional videos just like this to help you build wealth, reduce your long-term tax picture, then subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you get notified as we continue to come out with additional videos. Also, check us out on lifemoneyshow.com. That's lifemoneyshow.com for all content related to building wealth, reducing your tax picture, helping to make sure you're on track for financial independence. Thanks and have a great day.